So in today's video, what I'd like to show you guys is a quick walk around of our 2018 Pioneer 1005. So this is after a little over a year of ownership. We brought this home on Mother's Day in 2019. And it's currently the end of May. So about a year and a month of ownership. We're going to talk about some of the things that we added to it. So we bought it brand new off the showroom floor. And when we brought it home, it was just the deluxe model. We didn't get the LE, but I wanted the color panels. So we went ahead and bought the deluxe. So the first things that we did was uh, add the Honda roof and windshield. So we went ahead and did the plastic roof, full plastic roof, which is nice. We really appreciate that. Keeps the sun out, keeps the rain out. That way we can ride all the time. And then the second thing we did was add the two piece Honda windshield. So we went specifically for the hard coat and we like that because we can drive through the trees and there's little to no scrapes on the windshield. It's kind of dirty, it needs to be cleaned, but otherwise the top part has a nice hard coat on it. The bottom part doesn't, so it's scratched up pretty good, but the top is good. No scratches, we like it. It was a good option. So the reason, the big reason why we bought the Pioneer five seater over say the Pioneer three seater or even a Honda Talon is because we wanted those five seats. So we have a couple of kids, we've got an eight year old and a four year old. So they fit perfectly in the back. You'll notice we got a couple boat cushions there to give them a little bit more support when we're riding, sits them up a little bit higher. But the back seats are perfect if you have some kids. I don't know if I'd ride around with four adults back here for too long, I have before, so maybe 30 minutes and it's okay, but anything longer than that, it's not really designed for that many people. But the utilitarian side of it's pretty nice. Uh, if we're not riding with the kids, we can have the, the seats down and it has a full bed and it dumps. So if you're using it around the house, around your around the woods, around the yard, it comes it comes in handy. One of the biggest and most expensive upgrades we've done was wheels, tires, and shocks. We did them all at the same time. So I went with a set of Tusk wheels, Cascade style. So they make two kinds of Cascades. These are the matte option. And then the other option is a, a silver finish. So around the edges here is a silver finish. So I went with the matte black because I thought it looked pretty good with the matte black and red on the side by side. And then also the Fox shocks kind of give it that, you know, red and black kind of theme going on here. And then the Tusk Terabyte tire. So you can see they're a 28 by 10 by 14. So I went with the same size all the way around. And then I bought a total of five. That way I can run a spare if we're out cruising around and we get a flat, we're too far from home, I carry a spare with me if I need it. These Fox shocks are the OEMs. It's the same ones that come on the LE model. So these are the Fox external reservoir shocks and they are adjustable three position switch from firm to soft we just cruise around in the soft setting when we're out driving around and then i put them on the medium setting when i'm out doing some real trail riding so when we got the wheels we got them in a five plus two offset all four but on the stock machine the rear wheels are a little bit bigger so we went with the rb3 one inch spacers you can kind of see them in here and so that caused the track to widen in the rear and puts the front and the rear at right about the same width. It's not perfect, but it's less than half of an inch of difference, so it's barely noticeable. And as you can see, the tires are just to the outside of the body. So you could add maybe a two inch spacer in the rear and a one inch spacer in the front, give you a slightly wider track. I wanted to stay as close to that 63 inches of total width as possible, which is what the OEM comes with. Another thing we added was a recovery hook from Amazon. This receiver hook fits standard two inch shackles, so it'll fit your truck. And it's rated to somewhere around 20, 30,000 pounds. We didn't buy it specifically as a side-by-side -side accessory, but it fits and it works as a recovery point if you've got to pull it out to the rear or if you have to tow someone else out. Another thing we did was we added the factory OEM worn winch, same one that sold on the Power Sports Accessories website. So pretty simple, it's a worn winch, comes with this nice strap with Honda written on it, 
we went on Amazon and bought a little strap. It's a marketed it as an exercising strap and just strapped it to the bar. That way we keep the hook up and out of the way. Works pretty good. We like it. So to keep it OEM, since we went ahead and got the OEM worn winch or the one that is marketed from Honda. So we went ahead and did the OEM accessory switch panel with voltmeter. We wanted the ability to upgrade to a couple of different lights if we wanted to. We're not adding a whole bunch of accessories. There's a lot of aftermarket options out there. We just went ahead with OEM because we knew it was going to be plug and play and simple. I'm more of a mechanical guy by trade, so electrical stuff, not my thing. So I didn't want to go too hard into the electrical side of the house. This one works pretty well. As soon as you get accessory power, it tells you what your voltage is. And we've got slots for the switches for the couple of things that Honda sells. We might add a light bar later or something like that. Another thing we did was we painted the, the letters. You can see here the P, R, N, etc. Painted them white. When you get the side-by-side -side and you bring it home, these are completely the same color. These are all black, same color as the background. So it, in the evening time, you can't tell. You can tell here the automatic transmission, manual transmission and sport mode switches are both white background. This is how it comes from the factory. So we just made these match. And the paint pen that we use, we just got it on Amazon. Pretty simple, it's a super metal grip, industrial grade paint marker. So you can get these on Amazon, white color, works great. We can, in fact, I've, I painted these a year ago and haven't even touched them up since. So it's lasted quite a while and we're certainly pleased with that. Another thing that I really enjoy is our Throttle Max. I was a little reluctant to buy it. This thing is like 80, 90, dollars. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's kind of expensive. But I tell you, it's worth it. Uh, I was reluctant to buy one at first and we didn't have one for the first probably three, four months. And it causes quite a bit of fatigue on your foot if you're driving for long distances. So without Throttle Max, you get a decent amount of pressure on your ankle. You can see that sitting upright and having your leg coming down and then onto the throttle, your, your ankle is kind of at a 90 degrees. So when going long distances, fatigue sets in. So where Throttle Max comes in, it allows you to bring your foot back a little farther. You can see that angle is much less than 90 degrees versus way up here. Now we're coming down, you can see the big difference there. And now instead of operating at the ankle, you kind of just come down and push forward. It allows for a lot easier of operation. We definitely appreciate Throttle Max, it was a good purchase. We bought the door bushings from RB3 Off-Road. You can't really see them, but they're in there. Now, do I think that they were worth $50 a set? So for a total of four doors, that's $100. No, I don't think they're worth that, but they're the only ones on the market that sell it. Now, did it help our rattling a little bit? Yes, so the doors don't rattle on the rear now. The problem is that the doors still rattle a little bit on the front, because you have metal on metal. So you can adjust these little knobs, but sometimes they don't quite adjust completely, and you still get a little bit of rattling. I think I might end up putting a little bit of electrical tape over here to stop some of this rattling. So it definitely helped a little bit, but it's not perfect. Uh, I think for $50 for a set of four, that would definitely be worth it. I think 100 is too steep. But I understand, you know, it's a free market. There's probably a little bit of research and development and costs associated. And, you know, I paid full price for them. But I do think they were a little bit much for what they were. Grabbed a set of four. They're sold in pairs on Amazon for about 12 bucks a pair. So we got one, two, and then in the rear, three, four. So for a total of about 24 bucks shipped, got a pair of these handles. They're classic quad gear brand. So just helping out a little bit for getting in and out or holding on if you're going around corners too sharp and it's pretty nice. Another thing we did was just bought a Craftsman tool light. So it works on a couple of AAA batteries up here, just a simple LED light and a couple of zip ties. And what it'll allow us to do is you can kind of move it around and point it to whatever direction you want. So it works good for an interior light. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money and wire a light into anything with a switch and some of the other ones out there that are just stuck to the roof, they didn't hold on very well. So this was a pretty good solution. Just zip tied a light up there, picked it up at Lowe's for, I don't remember, $15, $20 or so. And it's pretty bright. Added the rear view mirror from Culpin. 
pretty decent. We added the side mirrors, but we ended up smashing those off within the first three to four days, so we didn't put another set on there. And another thing is our cup holders. These cup holders are sold on Amazon, and they're specifically marine cup holders, so I guess they're designed for your boat, but they fit pretty well. I've seen a couple of guys trim the whole plastic out here and fit those in. Might end up having to do that, because I lost one on the trail. I was running about 40 miles an hour, and it flew out. Went back to look for it, never could find it. Trim the hole out a little bit and buy another set, that way the cup holder fits flush down in there. Another Honda accessory bought these cup holders. Uh, now that I've got them, I wish I wouldn't have bought them. Should have got something different. They're only big enough for a can of Coke. This thing won't even fit a 20 ounce. These are completely useless. I don't even use them. We should have bought something else. Maybe I'll upgrade later on. But I ended up getting a set of four. One for the front, one for the rear. And that's what you get. Got a set of reverse lights from HondaSideBySide.com, their web store. Now these are fantastic, $120, plug and play installation. It's great. So the way they install is he uses the standard clips. So the same clips that you would get for the roof or the windshield, they're clipped on and then they run along the side, depending on how you wire them and underneath the machine, pre-wired for a backup alarm. So you plug the connector directly into the backup alarm and as soon as you put it in reverse, lights come on. I tell you, these things are pretty bright. Definitely a, a good added accessory if you ride at night. So here we've got our bed extender from JEI. Definitely a good company, I'd recommend buying from them. So what we did was we got the bed extender and then they sell a set of leveling straps. So it replaces your straps, adds an extra piece on here so that your bed stays level with the rear. So when you add the leveling straps, it allows your tailgate to be level with the rear. Just a simple add on there. And then we also added the second latch pin. So when you buy it from the factory, it only comes with one and there's an option that you can add that second latch pin down here. And we added that because we generally drive around with a cooler in the back. We wanted that little bit of extra security so it doesn't bounce around as bad with the second pin. So one thing specifically that we got that my wife just had to have was the horn kit. So this is the OEM factory Honda horn kit. And my wife just had to have it so she could drive around and beep at people. We cruise around through the neighborhood a lot, so we like to honk at people and wave as we go by. So it was added as part of the switch plate accessory, the winch, and then we got the horn with that as well. This decal cost us $20, and it came from a guy named Kent Hill. You can find him on Facebook if you either search his name or search The Vinyl Creator. And I know I've seen him before on HondaSideBySide.com, the forum. Uh, definitely a good quality. Uh, we've had this on for over a year, and the only spots that are starting to come out is the top of the end and a little bit down here. And that's only because we pressure wash this machine quite a lot. I don't think anything can stand up to a pressure washer. But otherwise, this thing's held on pretty well, looks pretty good. We like it. So on Rocky Mountain ATV, they sell a scissor jack with mount. So we got one of those sets. I don't have the actual scissor jack on, but it looks like your standard scissor jack. So what I like about this is it allows us to mount it to the frame. So the scissor jack and the handle to operate it are all together so that way if you get to get a flat on the trail or if someone else gets a flat on the trail you've got it with you now I don't carry it around when I'm just cruising around the neighborhood or locally at home I only carry it on the trail so that's why it's not installed it just stays in the garage but it's a pretty nice accessory so I hope you liked our video just a quick walk through of some of the things that we've done with our Honda Pioneer if you want anything more specific maybe talk about the wheels, the tires, the suspension, uh, something like that. Let me know. I can work on other videos if you guys are looking for something specific. Just wanted to go over everything somewhat quickly. Just kind of talk about what we've done so far. Currently don't have any future plans. The machine is just about where we want it. Like I say, we've had it for a year. and So I don't know that we're going to add anything just yet. So if you like our video, please like, subscribe. Throw us a comment down below what you think. And if again, if you're looking for something a little more specific, let me know and we'll see if we can make that video for you. Appreciate you watching. Have a good day.